Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. House of the Dragon Season 2 has a first look at Aemon Targaryen and a bunch of other scenes at major locations, like the returning to the wall. There are a couple huge dragon battle scenes, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Right now, they're one of the few shows that were able to continue shooting throughout the strike that's happening because most of the actors aren't actually part of the guild that's doing all the striking, with a few exceptions. They have enough foreign actors and people working on the show in major roles that they didn't have to stop. That's why there are new scenes from season two and why they'll still hit their original release window of next summer in 2024. But the first big scenes are of Aemon Targaryen and Sir Weird Footstuff, Larys Strong himself, at the Red Keep in two different scenes, but they're both at the Red Keep. The scene of Aemon is of him watching as he has two of the City Watch soldiers execute two different people in the courtyard. Now with green highlights on their armor because the greens had everyone's colors changed to match green for gold symbols for Aegon after the ending of season one. This is likely later in the season and he's executing two traitors to the greens or two important lords that won't switch sides for the blacks to the greens or they're just two lords that won't follow orders given to them by the greens, Aemon and everyone else. There's also a theory that this is happening a little bit later in the season, like the second half of the season, and Prince Aemon might have temporarily already become Prince Regent while Aegon is recuperating from his wounds suffered at Rook's Rest, which is supposed to be Episode 4. So this might be happening during Episode 5. The battle at Rook's Rest is going to be one of the big mid-season WTF battles that they're doing. This was a huge battle orchestrated by the Greens against the Blacks. Chris and Cole, who had just become the Hand of the King, used his elevated position and power within the Green Council to try and take Rook's rest. The whole idea is that they were trying to be way more aggressive in their tactics against Rhaenyra's side. Rook's rest is right here, right along the bay next to Dragonstone, so his strategic position was important for them, and they wanted to use it as a trap against the Blacks. They had just won a bloodless battle at the Sack of Duskendale nearby, with Lord Rosby and Lord Stokeworth bending the knee to Aegon in exchange for their lives. So that easy victory emboldened the Greens to try and push to Rook's Rest. So Chris and Cole tried to set a trap for Rhaenyra's side at Rook's Rest using 3,000 of their men in two dragons, Vagar, Aemond, and Sunfire, ridden by Aegon II. Lord Rosby, the ruler of House Staunton at Rook's Rest here, sent help for Rhaenyra. Only Rhaenys and her dragon melees were able to come help defend against the Greens and both of their dragons. And even though it was just Rhaenys herself against Aegon and Aemon, the idea is that she's meant to be vastly superior on Dragonback as a fighter against both of them. They kind of tease this at the end of season one, like she could have taken out Aegon and all the greens in one fell swoop if she had wanted to. The queen who didn't say burn them all. This time she definitely tries to burn them all. And on top of this, a dragon is like a nuclear weapon. It can take out an entire ground army by itself. So on her own, Rhaenys was able to take out almost a third of their ground forces, wounded Aegon in Sunfire so badly that Aegon was bedridden for almost a year, with Aemon having to take over his region temporarily. Aegon never fully recovered, Burns covered half of his body for the rest of his life. He had to spend most day hocked up on Milk of the Poppy just to deal with the pain, and he wound up being a little bit like Viserys, like his quality of life turned into that of Viserys. They'll probably show some parallels for this later in Season 2 and beyond. He became kind of like a shell of himself, like he lost the use of his legs and kind of wished that he had died. That's how badly he was wounded at Rook's Rest. It's also meant to pay off one of Helena's dragon dreams from season one where she mentioned him having no legs. She was talking about Aegon. Sixty rings and two pairs of legs on each. That's 240. The last ring has no legs at all. I already did a video for the scenes on the aftermath of the battle which they filmed earlier this year, like the aftermath of Rook's Rest. They were filming scenes of Aegon's forces carting in Melee's head with a huge procession. Rook's Rest was ultimately a victory for the Greens. They did kill Rhaenys and Melee's and take the keep, but it was meant to be a Pyrrhic victory, which they foreshadowed in Season 1. The idea that the Dance of the Dragons, Aegon's forces versus Rhaenyra's, ultimately there will be a winner, like somebody actually does have to be declared winner. But this winds up happening through the multiple battles that happen through Season 2, Season 3, Season 4 as they go on. Regardless of who wins each battle, both sides ultimately wind up losing. That was what Rhaenyra's quote at the beginning of Season 1 opening the entire show was all about. For he knew the cold truth. The only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. The only thing that can take down the House of the Dragon is the House of the Dragon itself. The scene of Sir Weird Footstuff, Larys Strong, is of him shouting down the steps, and it looks like he's fully entered the role of the Master of Whispers for the Greens. 
that was part of his arc at the end of House of the Dragon season one. Like they gave him the lordship of Harrenhal. Like he basically became the lord of his house because he killed his father and his brother. But also on the side, he'd officially become Aegon II's Master of Whispers. I did not wish for this. I feel certain you will reward me when the time is right. The next big scene is of them filming up at the wall for everybody wondering when we're going to see the wall or reference how Stark, Winterfell, the White Walkers again. It seems like this will be a little bit earlier in the season. It's supposed to be when Cragen Stark, Lord of Winterfell at the time, takes Prince Jacaris north of the wall when he's visiting on the orders of his mother Rhaenyra to try and win House Stark's allegiance to the Blacks. They're kind of fuzzy on how long the timeline moves along each episode in each season. They did this on Game of Thrones too, with people making jokes about the fast travel system. But Jacaris winds up spending a good amount of time up at Winterfell trying to win his allegiance. The big difference at this point in the timeline, though, is that their relationship between House Stark and the Targaryens is much better than it was during the events of the main show in Game of Thrones when things picked up. That was meant to start in the aftermath of Robert's Rebellion, which had started because Rhaegar Targaryen and Jon Snow's mother, Lyanna Stark, eloped to the Tower of Joy. When they disappeared, Lyanna's father, Ned Stark's father as well, Rickon Stark, Lord of Winterfell at the time, went to King's Landing with Ned's older brother, Brandon, to demand that Aerys II, the Mad King, do something about it and return her to him. Remember, at the time, because they eloped, everybody thought that Rhaegar had kidnapped Lyanna, not that she went willingly with him. The Mad King, who had gone very mad later in his life at this point, had both Rickon and Ned's older brother Brandon Stark killed, which was basically the tipping point where Robert's Rebellion actually began. So when season one begins, old wounds and all that, lots of bitter enmity against the Targaryens still around. But none of that had happened at this point during House of the Dragon, and it's even rumored that Jacaris fell in love with Cragen's bastard half-sister, Sarah Snow, while he was at Winterfell. The pact that they formed when he swears allegiance to Rhaenyra is also called the Pact of Ice and Fire, another reference to a song of ice and fire, which inside the universe of the show, they're now calling Aegon the Conqueror's prophecy about the long night, his dragon dream about the long night. The last of the Valyrian pyromancers hid his song in the steel. From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. It's also what George R. R. Martin used as the name of his saga for main novels in the series. Like, it's a big meme Leonardo DiCaprio moment. Like, oh, he said the name of the thing inside the thing. Then when we get to the main events of House of the Dragon season one in The Dance of the Dragons, a lot of what's happening in the Stark family is similar to what happens in the Targaryen family with Rhaenyra and the Greens. So Rickon Stark is the current Lord of Winterfell. He bends the knee to Rhaenyra during this period. But in that giant time jump between episode five and episode six, it's like a 10 year time jump. Basically the exact same thing happens within House Stark. There's this whole battle of the succession. And this is where you get to Cragen Stark, like the new main character inside House Stark and Winterfell during season two. Prince Jocerys will fly north and then to Winterfell to treat with Lord Cragen Stark for the support of the north. He's meant to be about the same age as Jocerys, as Rhaenyra said, oh, you'll get along just fine. This will be great. They'll totally support us. That's why she decided to send him instead of sending Lucerys. In the books, Cragen is just a little bit older than Jocerys. And what happened during all those time jumps between episode five and episode six is that Rick and Stark, the older Lord of Winterfell, passed away before the events of episode six. And when that happened, Cragen was way too young to be Lord. So his uncle named Bennard Stark, Rickon's brother, became regent until Cragen came of age. But right towards the end of the time jump in episode six, Cragen comes of age and his uncle Bennard refused to hand over control of Winterfell in the north. So the Starks had their own minor little Dance of the Dragons type of event over the Battle of the Succession. It wasn't nearly as big or crazy as the actual Dance of the Dragons itself. And when we get to the events of episode 10, when they're actually talking about going to Winterfell to form a bargain with them to support the Blacks, Cragen Stark has already defeated his uncle, thrown him in prison, and taken control of Winterfell. What happened to Cragen between the events of episode 6 and episode 10, though, is that after he defeats his uncle, he winds up marrying his childhood sweetheart named Alyssa Nori. They had a son who he named Rickon after his father, but his wife died soon after because of the childbirth, because of complications, much like Rhaenyra's mother. The other new scene is in the Westerlands near the Golden Tooth, controlled by the Lannisters. That's why it looks like Jason Lannister is leading the Lannister army to meet what looks like House Lefford, who controls the Golden Tooth. They're also sworn to the Greens as well. The reason why the Golden Tooth is so important in the Dance of the Dragons is because it's a huge strategic position in the Greens' supply chain across that part of the kingdom. 
they kind of got into this at the end of House of the Dragon Season 1. Damon was talking about all the strategic positions in the kingdom that they wanted to control. The Golden Tooth just happens to be one of them. If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the new scenes and footage, post them in the comments below. They'll be filming episodes for a while, so we'll get more footage pretty soon and probably a big teaser later this year. Typically during the original show, they waited till January to start releasing the full trailers, but that usually premiered earlier in the year. So because they're premiering this in the summer next year, that means they probably won't release the first really big trailer until like April or May. There'll be a bunch of smaller teasers before that though, so it's not like we're going to go bone dry until April or May next year. George R. Martin also confirmed that they're probably going to do up to about four seasons before they wrap up the Dance of the Dragons and move to the next major event in a different part of the timeline with a totally different cast, but it'll still be called House of the Dragon. They haven't confirmed what that's going to be or if they're going to go earlier in the timeline and do Aegon's Conquest, and everybody wants to see Aegon the Conqueror at some point, or if they're going to go later in the timeline and do the Blackfire Rebellions. We'll find out about that probably in the final season of the show. They do have the Night of the Seven Kingdoms series about the tales of Duncan Egg, but that's meant to be a totally separate thing. They're going to be doing those episodes concurrently with the last couple seasons of House of the Dragon, but because of the delays, we probably won't see that premiere until at least 2026. I've already done a much bigger video for that Night of the Seven Kingdoms trailer they released early this year. Click here to learn all about that, and click here for all my other House of the Dragon Season 2 teaser videos and first looks. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.